Now before anyone comments, I took the doors of our wardrobes. Why? Because I felt like it. But it's actually because I need to... We're just getting, we're just getting rid of them. Um, and I just got as far as taking off the doors off. I did a drama degree. I'm not, I'm not built for DIY. What I am built for, however, is reviewing good books. And one of um, my subscribers, Pooks of a Book Lover, saw this on one of my shelves and wanted to know my opinion before she read it. So I'm more than happy to do that. There's two main types of people who are going to be watching this video. The first are the people who've read this book and want to know what people's opinions are of it because they are diverse. And the second one are people, why is my cat? What's that pickle? Oh, the second people are those who have heard what this book's about and want to know if they should read it or not despite the controversy. Isn't that right? Oh, I love you too. Oh, pick a Lillian. We are very fluffy today. Pickle, do you like a little life? No, I actually think the theme's are very heightened. And sometimes it comes a little bit fast. There's moments that happen in June life that don't really seem to make logical sense. Also, the relationship between the men sometimes verge on cliche rather than actual love. Oh, well, that's, that's very good. They're very good points, and I completely agree with those. No, you. Before we get into the room, these are my reservations on this book. These are the only things that I don't particularly enjoy about the book. However, I'm going to read a segment of this book because I think it's going to give people a clearer understanding of one, if they want to read it, two, if they should read it, or three, if this is something they should totally avoid. I think it's very important. So if you don't want to hear it, you can skip along. His forearms were now so thickened from scar tissue that from a distance they appeared to have been dipped in plaster and you could barely distinguish where he had made the cuts in his suicide attempt. He had cut between and around each stripe, layered the cuts, camouflaged the scars. Lately, he had begun concentrating more on his upper arms, not the bicep, which were also scarred, but the triceps, which were somehow less satisfying. He liked to see the cuts as he made them without twisting his neck. Count the seconds it took to make each one, one, two, three, against his breath. It's not happy stuff. And again, if, if, if this isn't for you, if you think this is triggering, that's completely fine. There's other people who want to understand exactly what they're getting in for, and I think it's my responsibility to give you that. So, I wouldn't want someone to pick this up based on my recommendation and have a horrific time of it. I have an interesting relationship with this book. It was originally bought for me while it was shortlisted for the 2015 Man Booker, but actually read the blurb, and I think where the confusion comes from is that it seems to be about four graduates um, and detailing their life through New York. It's actually not that at all. The first 100 pages would make you believe that is what's going to happen. But very quickly, we focus on one of the main characters, Jude. And Jude has been abused from pretty much day one. He's physically disabled from an accident. He's been mentally abused, emotionally abused sexually abused in his childhood and those traumas seep into his adolescence, seep into his adulthood, seep throughout his life. There's tendrils of trauma that radiate through Jude St. Francis. It would seem from an outside perspective that a very successful law graduate turned into one of the best lawyers in New York making a shed load of money would be someone who could control their life and that they can enjoy their life. But Jude is very much the antithesis of that. It is not that he can control his life. It is that others control it for him. There are many conversations that cry for help that lead nowhere. There's Andy Jude St. Francis's uh, medical friend who seems to threaten action but still lets Jude go and the only control that Jude St. Francis has is is tangible items and the only tangible thing that he has control over are razor blades and it is a very <sighs> methodic self-harmer and those are the scenes where we see in complete chaos and someone who's acted out of control are the moments where Jude can breathe. They are the moments where Jude 
understands where he is within this world while he sits and bleeds he still has no control over a big question that Yanagihara asks which is do you have the right to stay alive if you do not want to people in Jude's lives would say that Jude should stay alive that he should be next to him in the street they should be embracing they should be living their lives together but all Jude wants ultimately is to kill himself and this permeates throughout the book and for me it's a question that I think needs to be discussed more in a modern setting which this book definitely has male suicide is on the rise men can't seem to express their emotions and everything is very much within it's very much interior there's no external jude's external is that people feel sorry for him but not because of the mental anguish but more so from his disability but with such a gleaming career he is able to afford nice things and people assume that he is completely walk in the life and live in the life that he should have. Deep down, Jude has no one to talk to. Intimate relationships to Jude are either violent and aggressive or they are sweet to the point that they are taken away from him. One of the greatest men that has been written within this book is Harold and it's very much like a modern Atticus Finch to me, a professor who takes it on himself to adopt Jude and become the father figure that he never had, along with Julia, his mother figure that he never had. But with being an adult, they will always be rebellion against parents. And though Harold lays out a foundation of, of love and care and warmth, Jude could only succumb to dark thoughts. And there's times where we all go through that, I feel. And I really love this book, not for its heightened depictions of trauma, not of its myriad scenes of self-harm. And though traumatic as they are, they only speak truer to someone who he himself has struggled. What Yanagihara Dad has created a case study of the worst possible experience and someone if you are really struggling should read this. It will put it all in perspective for you. You will be an outsider looking in thinking why why Jude why don't you do that why why have you said this why won't you accept anything anything that would make it better. And I think you'll read this and know what to do. I think you'll read this and reach out to someone. I know what to say. I know what not to say. And in silence, be someone's voice it, it this book is such a tall to force in what it can achieve in what it is able to bring to someone and there are two specific scenes where i cried openly on a bus to the point where one woman actually had to ask me if i was Okay, I just had to go, mm, really not. But, but those scenes will never go away from me. Are they the most harrowing of scenes? I hate that this book gets a bad rap for being excessive where it doesn't need to be excessive. For indulging and dipping its toe in shock and awe. For never letting a breath fully expel before a quick sharp intake. People love this book.
not for the horrors that go on within the pages. They love it for the light that it shows. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Thank you, Evening Campers.